everyone, welcome to day two of the Christmas table favours. So today we're going to do these little Ro Ferrero Rocher holders. They look great on a table. You could up here. I've got here. Um, enjoy this season, and this one says Merry Christmas. But I actually think you could again. You could put a name there if you wanted to use them as name tags. So you could put. You know, Diane there, so I know that I've got to sit at this spot. So these are just so cute and so easy to do. Very little amount of paper and card. So they're great for using up your scraps as well. They also make a little nice little office gift if you work in an office or a factory and you give out to your co-workers. You could give them one of these with their Christmas card. as just a little something if you don't give big gifts. When I was working full time, that was something we didn't do, give big gifts, but I thought I'd like to show you how to make these anyway. Now, I've done a, a top with a punch, um, which I'll quickly get. This punch is now actually retired, and I'm sure there's something that replaced it, but I haven't poured it yet. But uh, this one's called a scallop top tag topper. So I'm going to use that just to put that scallop top across the top. I have my Ro Ferrero Rocher here. I only opened them today to pop these in here so nobody's eaten any as yet. So let's show you what we need and let's get on with the project. So it's really easy. You need for the holder, you need a piece of card that measures eight and a quarter by two inches, which means out of an A4 sheet of card, you'll get five of these. If you're working with American paper, you need to cut down the quarter of an inch on here, on this side here, or you could leave it longer and, and make it longer, but you still get five out of a sheet of card, because two inches, so you'll have five out of a sheet of, of card stock, which is really great value for money. Okay, so you're going to need two pieces of designer series paper, which are really tiny as well. This one is two inches by one and uh, one and three quarter inches. Yep. And this one is one and three quarter inches by, let's see, one and five eighths of an inch, which goes that way, like so. Then you'll need just a bit of scrap, and I've got a piece of scrap here, in, and I'm just using white because it's just easier for our, let's show you, our little frame around here, which is optional, but, you know, if you want to put it on, you can. Um, so I'm doing that, and I can also stamp, uh, punch out my little saying on the top, and I've got a little bit of gold glittery paper here which is pretty old and not stamping up product at all, but I'm doing that for my back behind, whoops, let's get the red one, behind here, because I'm going to be using some really old punches, because it's I'm actually just showing you how to make these, I'm not um, advertising the products as such, this is Christmas card paper from last year, so let's get on with it, and we're going to need, I'll show you, one and three eighth punch and a one and a half scallop punch. We'll need a one and a quarter scallop punch and a one inch circle punch along with my tag top punch. A couple of dimensions, a little bit of glue and that's about it. So let's bring in our, our board and we're going to score this piece on the long side at Five eighths of an inch, five eighths, four, five eighths of an inch, two and three eighths, three inches, and four and three quarters of an inch. And that's all the scoring we're going to do. So we're now going to pop this on one side, my scoreboard, and we're going to pop in, whoops, bring in our scalp top punch, and the end with the long end, so we've got all the little score lines here, and then we've got, how long is that, um, three and a half inches in length, that's the end we're going to pop into our scallop punch, and we 
we're going to pop that in there and make sure it's nice and even. Yep. Pop that off. That's that bit done out of the way. Okay. So before we actually score this, I'm going to punch my hole into this section here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pop one of these. I've got a, a post-it note that I've cut, popped it out with my one and three quarter, uh, one and three eighths of an inch circle, and I've just popped that in, making sure that it's even all the way around, as even as you can get it. You know, eyeball it. If you want to measure it, you can. You can draw your lines this way and this way, but. Uh, for me, I'm just eyeballing it. Once I've done that, I will pop this into my punch and line that up and punch my circle, my hole in the middle there like that. This piece here you can use later on if you wish or not. Okay, so that's that piece done. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop our smallest, smaller of the two pieces of design series paper over the top of that hole, like so. So we really need to make sure, we've got some glue around the edge of that, so let's pop that in the bin, that this is going to go onto here like so. And pop this over the top of our hole like this, making sure we don't stick to our paper on there and we're going to just we can wipe that off in there so and then we're going to bring our punch back in again with that on there and punch it out now I do this this way because I actually don't like the idea of punch, trying to punch through two sheets of paper because it doesn't always do it and it doesn't do your punches any good if it can actually damage them so it's up to you if you want to keep that bit again so that's that bit done for now. So, oh, let me get this in there. Come on. Pin in there. So I'm going to put my edge around this, my frame. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in my one and three quarter inch. Oh, no, I'm going to bring in my one and three eighth inch punch again. And I'm going to pop this in here, leaving a gap around, and I'm going to punch out another Oh, that's too close to the edge. So let's pop that in again. That's a bit better. Pop them over there. And now I'm going to bring in my scallop punch and pop over the top of it like so, making sure I even it up as much as I can all the way around. When I'm happy with that, I can punch that out. And I now have my frame to go over the top of my piece so let's let's glue that onto there to start off with so a little bit of glue all the way around and we can pop this onto the front here now putting the frame on is optional up to you if you don't want to you know if you don't have the punches or you, you don't think it's worth it for what you're doing that's fine there's no right or wrong for that okay so that's our front of our card done so now we're going to actually fold all of these and burnish them now I did that first because it's just a little bit easier so that you can see where you're going and we're going to fold these all up like so and once we've done that we can now see that this is going to fold over like so um, on, I'll pop it on the side so you can see so it folds over like so like that so we're going to now pop some glue along this section here and we're going to lay this down flat and pop that one over the top like so making sure it's nice and flush on the top and the bottom and give it a nice squish down and we have our little holder our piece that measures two by one and three quarters uh, yeah one and three quarters goes on the top here like so so while we have our glue open we'll pop a bit of glue on this section here and pop this onto the top 
like so. Let's pop the pin in my glue for a minute because we're going to just do a bit more punching. So I've got my one and a quarter inch scallop punch and I'm going to just punch out a scallop which went on the floor. There we go and pop that there. And I'm going to glue this onto, I should have left that out, shouldn't I? That was a bit silly. Oh no, I'm not going to glue that. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So now, now if, if you are clever enough to be able to get that in there like this, that's fine, you can do it. If not, you need to stamp. And I didn't bring a, a block with me. Hang five while I get a block. Here we go, I have my block and I'll have a really old set, well from last Christmas, called Festive Posts and I'm just going to, to put this Merry Christmas from here onto that because I think that it just goes, it's big enough for what we need and, oh this is, this is awesome. Merry Christmas onto my block and I've got some Shaded spruce. Oh, excuse me very much. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Shaded spruce here. And I'm just going to stamp that down there that says Merry Christmas. Pop that lid back on that. And then with my one inch, I'm going to just punch him out. And then glue him to the other piece here and this is going to take a little while to, to um, stick because that's just the nature of putting things on top of glitter so that's why I've put quite a lot of glue on there and then one dimension on the back or you can lay it flat if you wish but I'll put one dimension on the back of this and that's all you need because they are only table favours so we don't need to over embellish pop him on there and a little chocolate inside like so what do you reckon I think that's so cute as I say I put Merry Christmas on mine you could actually put somebody's name there if you wanted to use them to make um, you know, name tags to go on the table but I just think they, they make a really gorgeous little Christmas thing to put on the table and it's just sweet and, and cheerful so I have three here these are all done with retired products and I actually think I like this one the best this is shaded spruce with a little bit of shaded spruce design and serious paper from last year these are that's done in garden green and this one is in real red so but this is, I would have to say, this is my favourite. So I hope you've enjoyed these. And that is project number two of the table, table favours, Christmas table favours. And I will see you again tomorrow with another one. Bye for now.